statements. It is now time for question period. The member from Leeds. Premier. Thanks very much, uh, Speaker. My, uh, my question is to the Premier. Premier, last Thursday, the uh, Deputy Premier did an admirable, admirable job of reciting the resume for the new member from Sudbury rather than answering my questions. Premier, you've said you made the decision to appoint Mr. Thibault as your candidate on November 30th. You also claim you didn't want Andrew Olivier to find out in the news. Premier, as your future boss, did you instruct Mr. Thibault to remain in the House of Commons and delay his resignation to avoid Mr. Olivier finding out? Or did you instruct Mr. Thibault to remain an MP until your operatives could sway Mr. Olivier with an alleged bribe? Well, Mr. Speaker, you know I know that the member opposite. I know the member opposite understands that uh, at those moments when there's a in a in a pre-election situation, Mr. Speaker, that uh, people make decisions for themselves in yeah. terms of their timing and their families and uh, and when they uh, when they will make uh, when they will make decisions public. So, Mr. Speaker, um, I also know that the member opposite understands that this is something that uh, this whole situation is something that we're taking very seriously. That there is an investigation that is ongoing, but that that investigation is taking place outside of this House, Mr. Speaker, and that's where we need to let it take place. Again, uh, back to the Premier. Uh, during the same uh, question period, your Deputy Premier referred to you in this way, and I'll quote her. Quote, she is a woman who thought through very clearly what she needed to do, unquote. I would like you to think very clearly about this. The people of Sudbury received taxpayer-funded mailouts from your candidate after he announced his intention to run for you. Premier, will the Ontario Liberal Party reimburse the House of Commons for Mr. Thibault's self-promoting propaganda mail-out? Thank you. Order. Order. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, I would be happy if the member opposite wants to have a, a conversation. We can have a little bit of a comparison about <laughs> who's getting householders from whom at the federal level, Mr. Speaker. And a member of the Conservative Party initiating that conversation, I think, is uh, is a, as an interesting uh, turn of events. But I would be very happy to have that conversation. Maybe we could have a show and tell, Mr. Speaker. We could bring in all the householders that we've got from federal, federal members from other ridings, Mr. Speaker. So. Mr. Speaker, the member opposite knows full well there's an investigation going on, and that investigation is taking place outside of this House, Mr. Speaker. As I have said uh, a few times, uh, some of the questions are moving slowly away from the topic of government business, and I'm going to ask and remind everyone that it's your duty to pull it back into that position, and I'm just offering the member uh, a word of advice. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Speaker. Thank you for the advice. Again, back to the Premier. I didn't actually expect you were willing to pay back the taxpayer because wasting a couple of thousand dollars of taxpayers' dollars is really nothing new to this government when you figure they've wasted $1.1 billion on the gas plants, $1.9 billion on smart meters, a billion dollars on e-health, another billion dollars on orange. So, you know, a couple of thousand taxpayers' dollars might not be a waste for Mr. Thibault either. After all, as federal NDP caucus chair, he must have known about the $2.75 million of taxpayers' money his caucus wrongly spent on mail-outs and satellite offices. Premier, do you agree that this mail-out is an example? Example of misspent taxpayer money, or is it just another example of the cost of your your government Question. doing business? Be clear that the member for Sudbury remained MP, and he continued his duties until the end of December. He was the MP for Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. So that is that is the fact, Mr. Speaker. And then there was a by-election, and he was our candidate, Mr. Speaker. So that's. That's the reality. Order. In terms of, uh, in terms of the other issues that the uh, member opposite raises, that'll do. And the minister responsible for seniors has done it again. 
So he's on my list. Mr. Speaker, in terms of the other issues that the member opposite raises, I am quite sure that the member opposite understands that it's extremely important that our health system, for example, have electronic health records, Mr. Speaker, that there be connectivity in our health system. If he doesn't understand that, Mr. Speaker, he should go to, he should go to uh, the doctor's offices. He should find out how doctors are functioning now Answer. with electronic health records and how they are moving into the 21st century, Mr. Speaker. I'm sure he values that that progress is happening. Thank you. Any questions? The, the Leader of Her Majesty's Royal Opposition. Here, uh, Mr. Speaker, my question is uh, for the Premier. Uh, Premier, in December of 2003, you rose in this House to uh, deliver your uh, Deputy speech, House Leader. And you said at that time, quote, they have every right to expect me to demonstrate that position and status cannot be allowed to undermine fundamental decency, honesty, and integrity. End of quote. Now, with four OPP investigations in your office, you seem to have cast aside those words. Premier, why have you allowed the position and status of the Premier's office undermine your fundamental decency, honesty and integrity in the Sudbury by election? Well, Mr. Speaker, I challenge the premise of the question from the uh, interim leader of the opposition. Uh, I have done my utmost at every turn, Mr. Speaker, on whatever issue to be open with the people of Ontario, to be very clear about what uh, what our position is, and, Mr. Speaker, to be clear about how we are uh, going to move forward. That's why I made a statement. I know that the member opposite is talking specifically about uh, about the Sudbury by-election. I made a statement a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Speaker. I laid out exactly what our position was. And beyond that, Mr. Speaker, I have been very clear and open that there is an investigation going on, that I will work with the authorities, but that that investigation is appropriately taking place outside of this House. The Premier, Mr. Speaker. Premier, let me read you a quote. The government's strategy is obviously to isolate, obfuscate, deny, 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 and hope that everybody just gets tired of it. That statement was from Liberal MP Ralph Goodall. And it was referring to a condemnation of the Prime Minister's actions or for the actions of one of his senior staff, who, by the way, did the right thing and stepped down. The Deputy Premier has even called our questioning of the apparent bribery uh, boring. Well, apparent contraventions of bribery laws are anything but boring to Ontarians. The latest forum poll shows that two thirds of Ontarians, an astonishing two thirds of Ontarians, know about the issue, and an astonishing two thirds of Ontarians want Pat Sabera to step down. Mm -hmm. Premier, are you hoping everyone just gets tired of the four OPP investigations Question. in your office and that they'll just go away? Well, Mr. Speaker, let me, uh, let me, just, quote, let me just quote from um, the PC House leader who said on February 27th of uh, this year, uh, and I quote, Stop interfering in an ongoing investigation and let it run its course. And unquote, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I have I have been very clear, Mr. Speaker, that we will work with the authorities. That there is an investigation going on, Mr. Speaker, and that that investigation is taking place outside of this house. We'll work with the authorities, Mr. Speaker, and that's as it should be. Final supplementary. Again, to the uh, Premier. Premier, when asked about uh, former Premier McGuinty, you said, "Quote: We're different people. We have different styles, and it's a different time." And quote. The OPP started two investigations into Mr. McGinney's office. Now, under your lead, there are two more. Mr. McGinney has a chief of staff under OPP investigation. You have a deputy chief of staff under investigation. He had Peter Feist clean up a mess. You had Jerry Lougheed try to do the same. Mr. McGinty ignored the truths about Orange e Health and the gas plant scandals. And Minister of Economic Development, Sudbury. Premier, you are no different than Mr. McGinty. When will you show Ontarians and the office of the Premier the respect it deserves and the integrity you promised? Control. Well, Mr. Speaker, um, whatever the rhetoric is that the leader of the opposition or the interim leader of the opposition wants to pull out, whatever framework he wants to put around this, Mr. Speaker, I need to I need to be true to what I know is the responsible course of action, Mr. Speaker. I have made a statement pub publicly. I've been very clear about our position, Mr. Speaker. I have been clear in this House over and over again that I made a decision about who the uh, who the candidate, who I believe the candidate should be for us in uh, the Sudbury by-election, Mr. Speaker. 
Speaker. And then there is an investigation that is ongoing, and that investigation is not taking place in this House. It's taking place outside of this House. I understand that the opposition uh, is going. They, they want to try to ramp this up, and they want to try to keep it alive, Mr. Speaker. I understand that. That is in their political interest. Answer. It is, in, it is in the province's interest, Mr. Speaker, that we continue to do the work that's in the best interest of the people of the province, while at the same time cooperating with the authorities. Thank you. New question, the leader of the third party. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. How many cabinet, uh, cabinet meetings has Pat Cerbera attended since the police told Ontarians that she was facing OPP anti-racket squad investigations? Thank you. Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, I was very clear in the statement that I made a couple of weeks ago about the course of action that, uh, that I was going to take, and that is a matter of public uh, record, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the fact is that there is an investigation going on. We'll work with the authorities. I will work with the authorities. Pat Cerbera will work with the authorities. And anyone who, uh, in my team who's requested, we will work with the authorities, Mr. Speaker. But that investigation is not taking place in this House. It's taking place outside of the legislature, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. How many government policy or operations decisions has Pat Cerbera been involved in since it was announced that she is facing two OPP anti-rackets investigations, Speaker? Well, again, Mr. Speaker, I, uh, I have said that the, um, uh, the investigation is taking place outside this House, but I want to go back to what the Chief Electoral Officer clearly stated, Mr. Speaker, and what the Chief Electoral Officer said in, uh, in his report, and I quote, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges, unquote. So those decisions have not been made, Mr. Speaker. I think the uh, leader of the third party knows that, and she knows that the investigation is rightly taking place outside of this House. Speaker, how many meetings with stakeholders has Pat Sabera participated in since it was announced that she is facing two OPP anti-racket squad investigations? Well, again, Mr. Speaker, I will, uh, I will give the same answer to the uh, leader of the third party, and that is to, uh, to remind her that the chief electoral officer, whose report is the only report that has uh, come in at this point, Mr. Speaker, and he said, and I quote, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges, unquote, Mr. Speaker. So, in fact, any investigation that's taking place is happening outside of this House, not inside the legislature, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question. The the Premier, the Speaker, this government is in a mess, and it is of the Premier's making. Ontarians are seeing the same bad ethics from the Liberals that they've seen for a dozen years. This Premier said she was going to be different. She'd clean things up. She'd be open and transparent. Instead, she is in lockdown, and she won't answer any questions. She's protecting senior Liberals who are under criminal investigation. In spite of all of the promises, nothing ever seems to change, Speaker. Will the Premier finally do the right thing and relieve Pat Sorbera of her duties today? Thank you, Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, the characterization of, uh, of what's going on in Ontario, I think, is a little bleak on the part of the, the leader of the third party, Mr. Speaker. Um, I've said to her, I've said to her uh, over and over again that I understand that there's an investigation going on, Mr. Speaker, and that we will cooperate with that investigation. But in the meantime, Mr. Speaker, there is a lot of work that is getting done. And, Mr. Speaker, I will draw the leader of the third party's attention to the action plan that we released on Friday, Mr. Speaker, which is a significant step forward in terms of our ability to deal with uh, public uh, uh, awareness of sexual assault and sexual violence, Mr. Speaker. Money will be invested in frontline services, Mr. Speaker, and on the day after International Answer. Women's Day, I think that's something that we can celebrate and, Mr. Speaker, make sure that we deliver on those promises, which is exactly what we will do, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Speaker, the Premier's top aide is facing not one, but two OPP anti-racket squad investigations, not to mention the other two OPP investigations into her government. That's more than Mike Duffy, 
That's more than Nigel Wright. That's more than Rob Ford. Minister of Agriculture, come and to yet order. Pat Cerbera is still providing advice to the Premier because the Premier thinks she knows better than the OPP, better than Elections Ontario, better than the tapes of Pat Cerbera and Jerry Lougheed, which anyone can hear. Will the Premier admit that she is wrong to keep Pat Sorbera working and have her step aside while these investigations are ongoing? Have her step aside today. Just do the right thing. Thank you, Premier. Well, again, what I say to the member opposite is that I've made a public statement. I've been very clear about what my uh, course of action will be. I've said that I will uh, work with the authorities, Mr. Speaker. But in the meantime, there's very important work that has to be done for the, the people of this province, Mr. Speaker. You know, there was a, there was a very serious rail um, uh, incident in Gogama this, uh, this past weekend, Mr. Speaker, and uh, our member for Sudbury was there. I know that the member for Nickel Belt was, uh, was also there, Mr. Speaker. I also know that it's going to be be very important that in this house we uh, we call on the federal government, as the leader of the uh, NDP federally has done, um, to. Up the clock, please. While the premier is putting the answer, uh, at best, the in injections of the minister of agriculture and the deputy house leader are annoying, and it'll stop. Please finish. We, our minister of transportation will be contacting the federal. Uh, Transport Minister Bo and both CN and CP to reiterate our concerns, Mr. Speaker, about rail safety. And I, uh, I hope that the leader of the third party will be working with us on that uh, on that very important file, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Final supplementary. Speaker, the Liberals have tried ignoring this scandal. They've tried slinging mud at everybody else. They've tried to change the channel over and over again. But what they haven't done, Speaker, is taken any responsibility or answer any questions. The Premier is taking counsel from staff who are facing criminal investigations while she refuses to answer simple questions, like who made the decisions in the Sudbury bribery scandal. Does the Premier realize how bad this makes her look? Does she realize the damage that it does to her credibility and to the credibility of her government? That's my question, Speaker. Does she realize the damage this is doing to her? And if she does, why doesn't she just do the right thing and have those people step aside? Well, Mr. Speaker, I, again, I will say that I, I understand that this is a serious issue. I take it very seriously. I have said repeatedly that I will work with the authorities. I have answered the questions over and over again in terms of uh, the uh, questions that have been put to me in this House, Mr. Speaker. But I am, I am also very, very clear that the, the investigation is taking place outside of this House, that the authorities are not here. They are not asking the questions in this House, Mr. Speaker. Those questions are being asked elsewhere. They are being asked as part of the independent external investigation, and that is as it should be. And that is the investigation that we will uh, take uh, that we will take part in, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. No question. The member from Nipissing. Good morning, uh, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. The gas plant scandal had the deputy chief of staff and senior Liberal oper operatives caught in the OPP's radar. The same is true in your Sudbury bribery scandal, and it would be the taped words of your deputy and Liberal operative that will be your undoing. You have stated that you made the decision to appoint your Sudbury candidate in late November, but it seems nobody knew. On December 12, Pat Sorbera told Andrew Olivier that you were, quote, going to be making your decision. According to your own deputy, you hadn't yet made your decision. The tape doesn't lie. Will you admit that your version and the version found on tape are vastly different? Vastly. Mr. Speaker. Again, I will say to the member opposite that there's an investigation going on outside of this house, much as he would like to be. He would like to be running the investigation, Mr. Speaker. It's not happening. His, uh, his House leader said on February 27th that uh, it was a good idea, and I quote, to stop interfering in an ongoing investigation and let it run its course, unquote, Mr. Speaker. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to let the investigation take place outside of this House, Mr. Speaker. And in the meantime, we are going to carry on the very, very important work of building this province up, Mr. Speaker, of making sure that we work and partner with business, Mr. Speaker, that we provide 
the home care that people need in their in their homes, Mr. Speaker, and that we put in place the policies that will keep young women and girls safe, Mr. Speaker, and will work to change the culture of sexual assault and violence. And that, Mr. Speaker, in respect of International Women's Day yesterday. Uh, again, to the Premier, this is just like the gas plant scandal, where Liberal operatives said one thing but recovered emails clearly laid out the truth. This time, it's your operatives' words that were caught on tape. Jerry Lougheed had quite a chat with Andrew Olivier on December 11. He talked about what would happen if Olivier said no to his job offer and instead went out and sold Liberal memberships. He left the door open for Olivier to run. According to your Liberal operative, you hadn't yet made your decision. You have been snared by your own story. So which is it, Premier, your version or the one caught on tape? Well, <laughs> again, Mr. Speaker, I will say very clearly, and I've said this, I've said this many times, that uh, we made a, I made a decision that Glenn Thibault would be the best candidate for us in uh, Sudbury, Mr. Speaker, uh, after my meeting with him at the end of November. I've said that clearly, and, uh, and Mr. Speaker, I do take this matter very seriously, but uh, I've said that I will work with the authorities outside of this House. That's where the investigation is taking place, and that's where it rightly should take place, because it is an independent investigation, Mr. Speaker. It's not an investigation that is taking place in the legislature. It's not a, it's not a political investigation, Mr. Speaker. It's an independent investigation that's happening outside the legislature. Thank you. New question. The member from Timmins, James Bay. My uh, question, Speaker, is to the Premier. The Premier said she wanted to keep a young man involved. That's why Andrew Olivier was offered a job in exchange for getting out of the Premier's way. But the crimes that the OPP are investigating just don't get excused away. Is the Premier ready to stop offering excuses and start offering explanations? You know, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to go back to a moment on February 27th where the, uh, this very member um, made a statement and he said, and I quote, you do have a larger responsibility to make sure you're careful in your use of words so that you don't interfere in any way, unquote. That was the member from Timmins James Bay, Mr. Speaker, so I know that he understands why it's important that we let the investigation take place exactly. with the authorities outside of this legislature, Mr. Speaker, but I just wanted to remind him of that because he did say that on, uh, on February 27th, so he will then understand better why my answer is, once again, we'll work with the authorities outside of this House, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Back to the Premier. Those comments were about you, Premier, by the way. The Premier is a grandmother. I'm a grandfather. The Premier has heard a lot of excuses. I've heard a lot of excuses. As any parent or grandparent knows, knows excuses don't cut it. it. That's especially true of the law. Excuses don't make it okay to break the criminal code or to violate the Election Act. Will the Premier stop making excuses and instead start giving answers to important questions like who made the decision to offer Andrew Olivier a job? Well, Mr. Speaker, let me, let me just once again say that um, you know I will cooperate with the authorities. The investigation is taking place outside of this house. But to the quote, to the quote that the member opposite made, uh, to, he said. And I, again, I'll just read it into the record, and I quote, you do have a larger responsibility to make sure you're careful in your use of words so that you don't interfere in any way, unquote. I know. Stop the clock, please. I, um, I wouldn't have stopped the clock, except there was some uh, bantering back and forth from people at the other side. So I'm gonna ask that that stop so that I can focus on the answer. Please. I know the member opposite was uh, addressing that to me, Mr. Speaker, but the fact is there's a principle in that statement, and the principle is that interference should not come from us, that we should let the, we should let the authorities do their work and let the investigation unfold, Mr. Speaker. That's the principle of which I wanted to remind the member opposite. Thank you. The member from Ottawa, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. On Saturday, 38 cars from a CN train derailed about two kilometres west of Gogama near the Manakwa River. While well, thankfully no one was hurt, a number of the cars carrying crude oil caught fire, the rail bridge over the Manakwa River collapsed, and two of the cars ended up in the river itself. Mr. Speaker, this was the second derail derailment in the area in less than a month. In both cases, the resulting plume of smoke could be seen for miles around. 
People in the community are concerned about the impacts these derailments, derailments are having on their air and drinking water. And Mr. Speaker, quite frankly, they're concerned about the rail safety regulations, the federal rail safety regulations that are supposed to protect them. Speaker, through you to the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change, could you please provide an update to the House on the situation in Gogam? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it's very very glad to get a question that Ontarians care about. It's very timely and important to so many folks. Um, first of all, I, I want to thank the, uh, for the citizens and local government in Gogama and the Greater Sudbury area, as well as the First Nations who are working so closely with our officials. I want to thank uh, the staff at MOECC, uh, in Federal Environment, uh, uh, my colleagues at uh, Natural Resources and Forestry, our OPP, the, the uh, Fire Marshal, and particularly the Sudbury District Health Unit for the excellent work they're doing to protect our citizens, Mr. Speaker, because the safety of Ontarians is very much our first priority. This, this horrifying crash, as my parliamentary assistant, uh, the member for Sudbury has pointed out, really has to draw attention to the need for greater federal government action to protect our communities and environment. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to report to the yes, House sir. that containment measures are in place in the Manaqua River. Vacuum trucks are on site to pull as much out as possible. We're taking water samples in a number of areas Thank and you. monitoring air, Mr. Speaker. And so Thank you. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the Minister for providing us the update of the situation in Gogama. I know I speak for every member of this House uh, uh, when I say that we are very relieved that no one was injured in this horrific incident. Mr. Speaker, it is clear that the federal government needs to do more to improve rail safety to pre better protect our citizens, communities and the environment. The rail cars involved were new models complying with the latest regulations, yet still we have the situation. Mr. Speaker, could the minister please inform members of this House on what the government is doing to call on the federal government to improve rail safety in Ontario after Saturday's incident? Thanks very much, uh, Speaker. I want to begin by thanking the member from Ottawa South for this very important question. Saturday's train derailment is, of course, very concerning to our government. And as the me member mentioned, the transportation of dangerous goods, including oil, is the responsibility of the federal government. I want to assure members of this House that I will be contacting Federal Transport Minister Lisa Raitt, as well as representatives from both CN and CP, this week to reiterate our government's serious concerns with respect to rail safety. Rail safety has always been a top priority in our discussions with our federal counterparts over the last number of years, Speaker. We need to do everything that we can to ensure that another incident like this does not happen in the future. And I know my counterparts in the government of Quebec have also been very outspoken and very active on this important file as well. We will continue to advocate on behalf Answer. of all Ontarians on this important issue to ensure the safety of all of those living in this incredible province. Thank you very much. Question, the member from the Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier, and it's about the Sudbury by-election. Instead of creating a culture which respects and adheres to the spirit and letter of the elections law, the Premier has created a win-at-all-cost culture in her office, even if that means cheating. That was her first mistake. Then she either delegated too much authority to her Machiavellian staff and political operatives, or she signed off on the plan to offer an enticement to Mr. Olivier to get him to stand down as a candidate, or worse, she ordered her staff to make the offer, which can only be called a bribe or a breach of Ontario's election law. That was her second mistake. The Premier has a responsibility to uphold the integrity of her office. When will she demand the resignations of Ms. Sarbara and Mr. Lahey? Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the members opposite continue to want to, uh, to run an investigation here in the uh, in the legislature mr speaker and and this is not this is not where the investigation can take place it actually has to take place outside of the legislature mr speaker it's independent and i think you know it's very it's very important that we take responsibility not to interfere with that to interfere with that investigation so mr speaker i say to the member opposite again i will work with the authorities but i will work with them mr speaker where they are doing their work where the investigation is taking place outside of the legislature. Right. Mr. Speaker, this is a channel that the Premier cannot change. In order to maintain the public's confidence and trust while these two police investigations continue to unfold, the Premier needs to demand the resignations of Ms. Sarbara and Mr. Lougheed. So far, she has steadfastly refused to do so. 
This is her third mistake when it comes to the Sudbury by-election. And by stating in this House that she believes Ms. Sarbara won't be charged, the Premier has interfered in and possibly compromised yep. the ongoing police investigations. The fourth mistake. Because parliamentary democracy requires a clear separation between the legislative branch and the judiciary. The Sudbury by election scandal is one the Premier can't blame on her predecessor or his people. When is she going to take personal responsibility for her role in this and demand the resignation Question. of Sarbara and Lahi? Well, Mr. Speaker, again, I've made a public statement. I've, uh, I've been very clear about uh, my decision in terms of who the candidate in, uh, in Sudbury would be, Mr. Speaker. But you know, the fact is, if the member opposite is really concerned about uh, the separation of what goes on in this House and what uh, happens in terms of independent uh, process, Mr. Speaker, then he will understand exactly why I answer this question in the way that I do, which is that uh, it is very important that I not interfere, Mr. Speaker, that the authorities are allowed to uh, run the investigation and let it unfold, Mr. Speaker. But the fact is that at the same time, there is other work that needs to be done, and that's the work of government, Mr. Speaker. That is the work that we make sure, for example, that uh, there are responses to incidents like what just happened at, uh, Go in Gogama this weekend, Mr. Speaker. Right. It's very important that we be able to do all of those things, Mr. Speaker, at the same time. The question is to the Premier. Pat Sobera said that there were others that were pushed out of the way by the Premier herself, possibly offered bribes. Who are those others? Again, Mr. Speaker, the investigation is taking place outside of this House, and we'll work with the authorities uh, as the, that investigation unfolds. Supplementary. Thank you very much. The Liberals have refused to answer this question even though they've insisted they've done nothing wrong. If they're not telling the whole story, there could be two other bribery investigations out there. In fact, there could be two other criminal investigations. Will the Premier tell Ontarians who Pat Sabera was referring to when she told Andrew Olivier on tape that the Premier had personally made at least two other calls to two other people making the same offer as she did to Andrew Olivier? Thank you very much, Speaker. And again, uh, as, as the Premier has said uh, over and over again, this is a matter that has been uh, is being dealt with outside this legislature. We should respect all authorities uh, in terms of the work they're doing. It would be highly inappropriate for anyone in this house to comment on an ongoing investigation. I respect uh, uh, Premier Speaker for for taking a principal approach in this regard. I suggest the members opposite that they should do the same thing. It's clearly a clear speaker that NDP is trying to continue to talk about this issue as opposed to real issues because they have a dismal record when it comes to defending progressive issues in this province. They have abandoned anything progressive when it comes to when it comes to making sure that Ontarians' rep, uh, interests are represented. I just quote uh, Carol Gower in Toronto Star when she wrote that Andrea Horvath triggered the election by rejecting the most progressive provincial budget in decades, one that would have raised the minimum wage increase the Ontario child benefit, improve welfare rates, and provide more support to people with disabilities. Yeah. Your question, the member from Hong Kong. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Community and Social Services. On Friday, the Premier released It's Never OK, an action plan to stop sexual violence and harassment. This is a package of initiatives to help change attitudes, improve supports for survivors who come forward about abuse, and make workplaces and campuses safer and more responsive to complaints about sexual violence and harassment. We know that one in three women will experience some form of sexual assault in her lifetime. This government has recognized that this is unacceptable. Mr. Speaker, this is a societal problem that has been in the shadows and not talked about for far too long. Minister, can you please provide this House with an update of the actions that the government has taken to support victims of sexual violence and harassment? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and to the member for Halton for this very important question. The Premier's announcement last week is the latest in our government's commitment to address the needs of victims of sexual and domestic violence. As a government, contrary to what was stated by the third party earlier today, we have increased funding by 51 percent 
since 2003 for violence against women's services. In 2013-14, our government spent $145 million in this sector. This includes funding for over 2,000 shelter beds for women and their children escaping domestic violence, counseling services for women and children, crisis telephone counseling, as well as local referral services for housing and other supports. And in the 2014 budget, we invested an additional $14.5 million over the next three years to provide funding to the hard-working frontline workers at the agencies that serve the violence against women. Sector. Thank, you. Thank you, Minister, for outlining the very real work that this government and your ministry has been doing. As we continue to better comprehend the complex issue of sexual violence and harassment, we have gained an understanding around victims and perpetrators, learning more about those who are at risk of suffering abuse, and also realizing how pervasive sexual harassment continues to be in our society. It is a deep-rooted problem. It crosses all social boundaries. It is experienced by women, girls, men, and boys of every age and culture. It can occur at any time, anywhere, any place. It is a crime. This government has recognized that to tackle sexual violence and harassment, there needs to be a comprehensive plan, a plan to change behaviors and challenge social norms. Mr. Speaker, in every workplace, Question. every campus, every community, and every context, we can and must do better. Tell us about the prevalence, Minister. Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And indeed, the prevalence of sexual violence and harassment throughout our society is unacceptable. For example, statistics show that women with a disability are three times as likely to be forced into sexual activity by use of threats or force. Through our government's new action plan, we're doing our part to establish an Ontario where everyone is free from the threat, fear or experience of sexual violence and harassment. As part of this action plan, my ministry will be enhancing the focus and action of our 48 domestic violence community coordinating committees on sexual violence awareness. My ministry will also be exploring the use of community hubs to offer services like sexual assault centres, public health units and legal aid offices in one location to address the barriers women face in accessing Answer. services. Mr. Speaker, our government agrees with the member that in every workplace, every campus, every community, we can and must do better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. The Chief Electoral Officer's report confirms what we have always suspected, that the Ontario Liberal Party will do just about anything to win a by-election. Alleged attempts to bribe the Liberal candidate have sullied the democratic process. And now the Premier's refusal to do the honourable thing and remove Pat Subara and Jerry Lawhey Jr. from their public positions has sullied the dignity of the office she holds. Premier, did your zeal for winning the Sudbury by-election also extend to making promises to the Sudbury voters that you had no intention of keeping? Well, Mr. Speaker, let, let me first of all just say that um, you know I, I think that to second guess the democratic process which uh, which took place in Sudbury, the people of Sudbury uh, had all the information. They made a decision. They sent uh, Glenn Tebow to uh, Queens Park as the uh, MPP for Sudbury, Mr. Speaker, and they made a decision. So I I respect that decision that they made, Mr. Speaker. And to the point of what the chief electoral officer has actually said, Mr. Speaker, let me just uh, let me just say again that the chief electoral officer clearly stated, and I quote, "I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges." Unquote. That's what. That's what the Chief Electoral Officer said in his report, yes, Mr. Speaker, and uh, there is an investigation going on outside of this House. Thank you, Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again to the Premier. The member from Sudbury said, and I quote, everyone in the North knows someone who has been affected by an accident on the highway. We're talking about Highway 69. The Highway 69 project, which the Premier promised throughout the Sudbury by-election, is surprisingly not a priority now that the campaign is over. 
After years of promising its timely completion, we see it delayed for yet another four years. This is just another example of the Liberals saying one thing and doing another to get votes. Premier, the first question I— Stop the clock, please. I'm sorry for interrupting. I have to bring someone in your own caucus uh, to attention so I can hear the question and uh, the interjections of everyone else. I am listening carefully. There was a reference, and I will let you finish the question and making sure that it is uh, germane to the first question. Premier, the first question I asked you was about integrity. Last week, I asked you about unprecedented irregularities. Now I ask you, how good is your word? Minister of Transportation. Minister of Transportation. Thanks very much, Speaker. I'm uh, very happy that the member opposite asked a question regarding the four-laning of Highway 69. Last Friday, Speaker, I had the opportunity to be in a community just south of Sudbury, standing alongside my colleague and good friend, the member from Sudbury, to update the community with respect to where we stand. It's important to recognize, Speaker, that there's been extraordinary progress on this particular project, thanks to the leadership over the last decade and, and more of this government. And in fact, Speaker, of the 20 kilometres that are currently under construction on Highway 69 with respect to the four-laning, nine kilometres will be paved and in operation this coming sum summer. An additional 11 kilometres will be paved and operating next summer, Speaker. We've already completed 50 kilometres of this project. We've already completed 50 kilometres of this project. There is more work to do, Speaker, but what's most important for this Premier and our government Answer. is to make sure that we get it right so that the benefits of four-laning Highway 69 flow to everybody, including our First Nations partners, speakers, Speaker, and that's why we're going to make Thank sure you. this project gets completed. In the Thank you. Any questions? Stop the clock, please. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Start the clock. New question, member from Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. On February the 20th, it was reported that the federal Liberal Party would have nothing to do with Jerry Lougheed or Pat Sabara during the upcoming election. The federal Liberal Liberals obviously realize something that the Premier is ignoring, that bribery scandals are bad for business and they're bad for democracy. The federal Liberals also suggest Jerry Lougheed won't be holding any fundraisers for them. Will the Premier or her party be accepting any money from Jerry Lougheed while he is under police investigation? Um, I'm, uh, as I said, I've been trying to listen carefully, and I know this weaves in and out, and then make sure that uh, the member brings this to government policy in the supplementary. Premier. Minister of Community Safety and Correction Services. Thank you very much. Minister. Thank you very much, Speaker. And again, uh, I have raised day where the Premier has said Lani. clearly that there is an ongoing investigation that is taking place uh, outside this House. Uh, speaker, it will be highly inappropriate for, for any member of the government uh, to comment on those investigations. We should respect the process and go back, uh, come back down to the issues that are important to people. To issues, like, uh, issues like uh, making Mr. sure Lani. that we have retirement income security for hardworking Ontarians who do not have a, have a pension plan, uh, Speaker, or making sure that we are investing in our in our infrastructure, most importantly, public transit, public transportation infrastructure. I thought Clearly, Speaker, the NDP question. have no positions on these issues. They have abandoned these important issues. They do not want to talk about those issues, and this is their strategy Answer. to deflect, and this is something they have been doing uh, since last year, Speaker, and we have seen the results uh, of the last election where people elected Liberal majority government. Thank you. <laughs> Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. On December the 12th, Jerry Lougheed met with Andrew Olivier on behalf of the Premier to offer him a job. Since then, the Sudbury Police Services Board have met three times, but in nearly three months, the Premier has yet to remove Jerry Lougheed from the Sudbury Police Services Board. Jerry Lougheed has been making decisions that affect law enforcement in Sudbury, all the while facing a criminal investigation. Anyone can see that that's not right. Will the Premier sign an order in Council today to remove Jerry Lougheed, a Liberal nominee to the board, from the Sudbury Police Services Board? 
Uh, speaker, as I've spoken on this issue before, I think the member opposite very much knows that the uh, the boards are, are made up of both municipal appointees uh, and provincial appointees, and there is a code of conduct by which uh, boards must abide by. Uh, and and if uh, boards have any any issue, the from they can refer the matter from to the order. Ontario Civilian Police Commission. Yeah. In this case, I think we know, Speaker, that uh, Police Services Board back. in Sudbury have uh, have done so. But again, Speaker, this just goes to highlight again that how NDP does not want to talk about real issues. This is something they've been yeah. they've been suffering yeah, from uh, from for over a year. I, I, I want to I want to highlight what Martin Drake Khan said in uh, in uh, in uh, Toronto Star. Andrea Horvath meets Stephen Harper, your new best friend and fellow traveler. Wow. As leader of Ontario's and NDP, sir. Horvath has made a stunning about face on pensions between the middle class, working class, and everyone in between. Under Horvath, the Tory NDP is no longer the activist Thank but you. obstructionist. New question, the member from Mississauga Street. Thank you very much, Speaker. This question is for the Minister of Government and Consumer Services. Good question. Ontario's real estate sector contributes billions annually to our economy, and it supplies the livelihood for some 57,000 people in our province. Today in the House, we're joined by many members of the real estate community and business people from many of our Ontario communities. All of our communities depend on an ongoing and a respectful relationship between home purchasers and realtors, whether realtors are part of larger brokerages or whether they're independent agents. The Ministry of uh, uh, Government and Consumer Services has identified real estate modernization as a priority. I'd like the minister to explain Question. the measures that Ontario is taking to help ensure a competitive real estate environment that allows for successful business operations Thank and you. a fair market for consumers. Minister of Government and Consumer Services. Thank you, uh, Speaker, and I uh, want to thank the member from Mississauga Streetsville for this important question. I also like to welcome the uh, Ontario Real Estate Association here to the gallery. I encourage members to stop by their reception later today. The purchase of a home is a significant milestone for many Ontarians, and I am pleased with the steps that our government has taken to simplify this process. Our Stronger Protection for Ontario Consumers Act makes the real estate market more open and transparent, as well as affordable. We have approved real estate transactions by allowing for more appropriate billing and fee options. This reform increases flexibility for home buyers and sellers to negotiate charges and services with their professionals. We have taken steps to eliminate phantom offers which inflate prices and undermine transparency. The Act requires realtors to provide offers in writing, and this regulation was based on extensive consultations with the sector and received Answer. support of OREA. I appreciate the contributions of those who work in the real estate industry make and look forward to continuing to work with them. Speaker. Thank you, supplementary. Well, thank you, Speaker. Minister, the purchase of a home can be a stressful experience. It's the biggest purchase that most families ever make. Our government needs to explore every opportunity to make the process more efficient and easier for individuals and families. Consumers need to ensure the business environment is fair and transparent and that the interests of the home buyer and seller are protected. Our no I know our government has also worked to support an efficient real estate environment by allowing electronic signatures. Members of the real estate industry support this change. My question asks you to confirm that the province will be moving forward with it. Would the minister please inform the House the how the Electronic Commerce Act is making the sale and purchase of real estate easier and more efficient for the people of Ontario and for home buyers Question. and home sellers? Thank you. Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Speaker. And uh, once again, to the member from Mississauga Streetsville, Ontario's 2013 amendments to the Electronic Commerce Act will allow people to electronically sign paperwork and email it to the real estate agent. The Act will support the reliability of electronic signatures on agreements of purchase and sale of land by stipulating that e-signatures must be uh, reliable for the purpose of identifying the person uh, who signs the document. They must be permanent and accessible by people who are entitled to view it. We're now reviewing the submissions made to the ministry during the consultation period to develop proactive measures and ensure that these amendments will increase effi efficiency without increasing the risk of fraud. Our government is committed to an efficient, competitive real estate environment and look forward to the continued engagement with the real estate sector on this matter. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. New question. The member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Is the Premier returning? Okay, you stop the clock, please. Um, the 
excuse me. The, uh, the tradition is a courtesy in terms of uh, attendance one way or the other. Uh, we do not make reference to people's absence. If you would put the question to someone else, we'd appreciate that very much. Um, It's not my uh, it, it, it's not my position to uh, debate the member from Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke. It doesn't matter. Put your question, please. Thank you for that explanation, Mr. Speaker. I'll, uh, I'll address my question to the uh, deputy premier then. A deputy premier, nearly every time you and the premier rise in this legislature, you tell us that you're taking this issue, the Sudbury by-election issue, seriously. The Deputy Premier, you are taking this just about as seriously as you did the actions of Laura Miller and Peter Feist. You let them fly across the country to avoid accountability. And now you continue to let Pat Sabera and Jerry Lougheed avoid accountability for their actions that were found to be in direct contravention of the Election Act. Deputy Premier, will today be the day you finally hold these individuals accountable? Well, thank you, Speaker, and uh, we do take this very, very seriously, Speaker. Um, the Premier has spoken to it repeatedly, both in this House and outside of this House. I think the question is, where should the investigation take place? And I don't think there's any question that the investigation should take place outside of this house and that is it is important that it's independent of this legislature and takes place outside the legislature uh, elections ontario determined that the allegations against the member from sudbury and the premier were baseless speaker and nonetheless they will continue to operate uh, to uh, cooperate fully the chief electoral officer uh, clearly stated I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determine nor determining anyone's Answer. guilt or innocence. That's a very important statement. I am not determining anyone's guilt or innocence, Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Well, perhaps if the government started answering some of these simple questions, uh, the questions wouldn't get asked anymore. But again, to the Deputy Premier, as we continue to wait for four OPP investigations to conclude, we can only worry what might be next. Premier, Deputy Premier, with your lack of action so far, how can we believe that you're serious about making your government more accountable? You know, Speaker, I think we've received some very good advice from uh, members of, uh, of the opposition. We agree when the PC House leader said last week or a week or two ago, stop interfering with an ongoing investigation and let it run its course. When asked about a charge um, laid against a PC staff member, the PC member from Whitby, Oshawa said, I really don't have a comment because it's before the courts. She repeated this sentiment on CP24 when she said, I'm leaving it in the hands of the police Remember from and the justice East, system to continue their investigation. I am confident they will reach the right conclusion. We agree with the, uh, with the House leader. We agree with the member from Whitby Office. Answer, Office. thank you. The question, the member from Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Speaker. Just over a year ago, the Premier stood up and said, and I quote, I am the change, end quote. Sorry, this is to the Deputy Premier. It seems a bit odd because before the Premier was sworn in, the Liberal government was facing police investigations. And since the Premier was sworn in, the Liberal government is facing even more police investigations. The culture of arrogance doesn't seem to have changed at all. Will the Deputy Premier, Premier ensure that the Premier will keep to her promise and make change by telling Ontarians who was making the decisions in the Sudbury bribery scandal? Thank you. Thank and to the Premier. Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. Community of... What happened to Amergy? Minister. 
Thank you very much, Speaker. I'll be, I'll be very happy to answer this question and re remind the NDP what they campaigned on. They campaigned on uh, voting against increases in, to the minimum wage, Speaker. They voted against increasing the salaries for hardworking personal support workers. In fact, Speaker, they, vote, they campaigned they, on voting against uh, the hardworking childcare workers. They campaigned to vote against to uh, provide additional funding uh, for the disability uh, people with uh, intellectual disability, Speaker. That's the party, Speaker, who claims to be progressive but have voted against one of the most progressive budget, not one speaker, but twice. That's what NDP spends for, and the reason, Speaker, they're spending all this time talking about anything else but real issues like the Ontario Retirement Pension Plan is because they have no policies, because they do not believe in progressive Answer. policies, and we're not the only ones saying this, uh, Speaker. The people of Ontario passed the judgment on uh, in June in the elected Liberal Majority Government. Thank you, Speaker. Less than a year ago, the Premier promised Ontarians, quote, work, she would work each and every day to keep your trust, end of quote. But instead of trust, the behaviour of the Liberals is making people more cynical. Instead of answering questions about the Sudbury bribery scandal, the Premier is dodging, hiding and trying to distract people. An editorial published says that in spite of well over 100 questions about the Sudbury bribery scandal, the Liberals have directly answered only one single question, and that's less than 1 per cent. Will the Premier start making good on her promise and keep Ontarians' trust by answering a simple question? Who told Pat Sabera and Jerry Lawhey to offer Andrew Oliveri a job? Minister. Speaker, uh, Speaker, clearly NDP has uh, has no tangible I'm issues or policies Andrew. left to talk about. Clearly, they have nothing nothing left for them to go back to their party members and say this is what we stand for again and again. And they have demonstrated, oh, Speaker, wow. that they stand for nothing. Uh, in fact, if anybody, Speaker, they're really aligned with the Prime Minister Stephen Harper when it comes to issues on retirement income security. You know, this is what Martin Drek Khan had to say in, in the Toronto Star. Andrea Horvath meets Stephen Harper. Your new best friend and fellow traveller. As leader of Ontario's NDP, Horvath has made a stunning about face on pensions, betraying the middle class, working class and everyone in between. Speaker, he goes on to conclude in this column, under Horvath, the NDP is no longer activist but obstructionist, not progressive but reactionary. The Prime Minister would be proud. Shame on them, Speaker. New question, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And my question this morning is to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Great minister. Great minister. Great minister, that's right. Yeah. There are many Ontarians who have loved ones requiring an organ which would save their life. Every day, hundreds of Ontarians wait for the gift of life. Sadly, I have even heard from constituents in my riding of Davenport that, that are enduring this excruciating wait themselves or for a loved one. Demand for organ transporta uh, transportation is increasing due to technological and pharmacological advances, the aging population and increasing incidence of end-stage organ disease. Organ donation is a critical part of our world-leading health system. Mr. Speaker, through you to the minister, tell us about our government's organ and tissue donation and transplant system and how our government plans on addressing the increasing Question. demands for organ transplantation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the member from uh, Davenport for this important question. And, Mr. Speaker, our government developed the organ and tissue donation and transplant system to address three main goals to maximize organ donations, to increase organ transplants, and to reduce the wait times for organ transplantation. Also, to support an effective, efficient, and accountable organ and tissue donation and transplantation system. And thirdly, to meet the, the need for safe and high quality organ and tissue trans, uh, needs for transplantation in Ontario. Mr. Speaker, our organ and tissue donation and transplant system is highly effective. It consists of 56 designated hospitals in the donation infrastructure system, 21 of which are hospitals that provide neurosurgical or trauma services. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to thank our hard-working yeah, health care professionals for their work in our organ and tissue donation and transplant system. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. 
So thank you to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care for his work with Ontario's organ and tissue donation and transplant system. I would like to direct the second part of my question to the Minister of Government and Consumer Services. As the Minister responsible for Service Ontario, the Minister of Government and Consumer Service plays an important role in promoting awareness of the need for more Ontarians to become donors. While I'm encouraged by the increasing number of owner, organ donors, I understand that many Ontarians are still on waiting lists for life-saving or life-transforming transplants. I appreciate the work of our health care professionals who have the skills and knowledge to perform medical miracles, but for them to save lives, Ontarians must donate. As leaders, we must continue to educate the public about organ donation Question. and register organ donors to continue helping our health care professionals save lives. Minister, can you please share with us what Service Ontario is doing to encourage organ donation Thank and how you. Ontarians can become donors. Minister of Health, Long-Term Care. To the Minister of Government and Consumer Services. Minister of Government and Consumer Services. Thank you, uh, Speaker. I want to uh, thank the member from Davenport for the uh, supplementary question. I'm certainly pleased with our initiatives in Service Ontario in partnership with the Trillium Gift of Life Network and the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care to increase the number of organ and tissue donors in the province. Among our initiatives, we've launched an innovative, easy-to-access online donor registration. We're ensuring staff at Service Ontario centres ask customers about registering when they renew their driver's licenses or Ontario photo cards. We're including donor consent forms and information brochures in our health card renewal or re-registration notices, and we're using social media to attract more donors. As a result of these initiatives, Speaker, over 3.1 million Ontarians have registered to donate. I'm pleased to report that 2014 Answer. was a record-breaking year with over 250,000 Ontarians registering. I'd like to uh, recognize and thank the record number of Ontarians who are registering for this process. Thanks. New question. A member from Renfrew, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Deputy Premier. Deputy Premier, your Premier is having her credibility eroded on a daily basis, and I know you're bored with these questions about the Sudbury bribery scandal. So I put this to you. Would you today, we'll help you, would you today have Pat Sabera step down until this investigation is completed and have Jerry Lougheed removed from the Police Services Board until this investigation is completed and you'll be able to change that channel and move on to something that you find more exciting? Well, thank you, Speaker, and I certainly am grateful for the help of the, the member opposite. I do think there are other questions that uh, uh, citizens of Ontario would like to be raised in this House, Speaker. But, you know, the member opposite has already actually given us some good help. Let me give you the advice that he's given that we're taking. Uh, his House leader said, uh, stop interfering in an ongoing investigation, let it run its course. So that's advice that, that he gave us, and that's advice that we are taking, Speaker. But if that's not enough, um, the member from Whitby, Oshawa, said, uh, when asked about charges laid against a PC staff member, she said, I really don't have a comment to make on this no, because it's before the courts. So again, she gave us good advice, advice that we are taking. You should take your own advice. And she didn't just say it once, Answer. she said it again in a CP24 interview. She said, uh, I'm leaving it in the hands of the police and the justice system to continue their investigation. I'm confident they'll reach the right conclusion. Thank you. Supplementary. Deputy Premier, even the Premier's predecessor once stated, it is never too late to do the right thing. Right. So I would ask the current Premier and you in her stead today to finally do the right thing. Your Premier spoke ad infinitum as she came to this House as the first elected premier, female Premier in the province of Ontario, how things were going to be done differently, how she would be accountable, responsible, and she would the integrity the would not be questioned in this order. House. I give her this opportunity. Change this channel, have Pat Sabera step down until this investigation is complete, have Jerry Lawhey step down from the Police Service Board until this investigation is complete. Will you give that House, will you give the people of Ontario that today? Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, speaker, as I, as I said, you've given us good advice. We're taking that, that advice. We're going to do exactly what the PC House leader said to do, and that is to stop interfering in an ongoing investigation and let it, let it run its course. We're grateful for that advice. Thank you, Speaker. The Minister of uh, North, uh, the Minister of Forestry. Uh, Forestry. Speaker, <laughs> Minister of Forestry. I think you're referring to me. I'm not sure. Speaker, I'd like to introduce three students from uh, Lakehead University in Thunder Bay that have joined us this morning: Baifa Yusuf, Ian McRae, and Yeoman, uh, Roman Yakabuski. They're here with us in the members. Uh, <laughs> I thank, I thank the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry, the member from uh, Algoma, Manitoulin. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on a point of order, I'm sure the uh, Minister for uh, Ministry of Environment and Climate Change and the Parliamentary Assistant knows full well that Gogama is my hometown. There are, no there are no deferred votes. This House stands recess until 1 p.m. this afternoon.